Welcome fellow explorers to another enlightening journey through the depths of the enigmatic universe. I am your guide Clifton 3D and today marks our sacred passage to our cherished series Sunday Bible Stories. Today we embark upon the narratives woven into the chapters of Genesis chapter 36 and 37. So without further delay, join me as we dive into these profound stories. As always, we are reading the King James Online Study Bible, Genesis chapter 36. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Ali Baham, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Sibion, the Hivite, and Bashameth, Ishmael's daughter. Sister of Nebajoth and Ada bare to Esau Elipaz and Bashamath bare Royal and Aoli Bama bare Jush and Jalam and Korah. These are the sons of Esau which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. And Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle, and all his beasts, and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan, and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than that they might dwell together, and the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Edau, the wife of Esau, Reel, the son of Bashmeth, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, and Gatam. And Kenaz. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Eda, Esau's wife. And these are the sons of Rael, Nahath, and Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Bashmath, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Alibama, the daughter of Enna the daughter of Zebion, Esau's wife, and she bare to Esau Yush and Jalam and Korah. These were dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Teman, Duke Omar, Duke Zepho, Duke Kenaz, Duke Korah, Duke Gatam, and Duke Amalek. These are the dukes that came from Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Ada. These are the sons of Reel, Esau's son, Duke Naha, Duke Zerah, Duke Shama, Duke Miza. These are the dukes that came from Reel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Bashmeth. Esau's wife. And these are the sons of Ali Obama, Esau's wife, Duke Jush, Duke Jalam, Duke Korah. These were the dukes that came of Ali Obama, the daughter of Anna, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, who is Edom. And these 
are their dukes. These are the sons of Seir, the Horat, who inhabited the land Lotan, Shabal, and Zebion, and Anna, and Dishan, and Ezra, and Dishan. These are the dukes of the Horites, the children of Seir, in the land of Edom. And the children of Latan were Hori, and Hemam, and Lotan's sister was Timna. And the children of Shabal were these, Alvin, and the Manahath, and Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These are the children of Sibion, both Aja and Anna. This is that Anna that found the mules in the wilderness as he fled the asses of Sibion, his father. And the children of Anna were these, Dishan and Aliobama, the daughter of Anna. And these are the children of Dishan, Hemda and Eshban and Ethron and Siran. The children of Ezer are these, Bilan and Savan and Akan. The children of Dishan are these, Uz and Aran. These are the dukes that came from the Horites, Duke Lotan, Duke Shabal, Duke Zebion, Duke Anna, Duke Shion, Duke Ezra, Duke Dishan. These are the dukes that came of Hori, among their dukes in the land of Seir. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom, before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. And Bila, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinabah, and Bela died. And Jacob, the son of Sarah of Bosra, reigned in his stead, and Jacob died. And Husam of the land of Timini reigned in his stead. And Husam died, and Hadad, the son of Bedad, who smote Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead. And the name of his city was Avit. And Hadad died, and Semla of Masrekah reigned in his stead. And Semla died, and Saul of Rebahoth by the river reigned in his stead. And Saul died, and Balahanan, the son of Ekbor, reigned in his stead. And Balahanan, the son of Ekbor, died. And Hadar reigned in his stead and the name of his city was Pau, and his wife's name was Metabal, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. These are the names of the dukes that came of Esau, according to their families, after their places. By their names, Duke Timna, Duke Alva, Duke Javeth, Duke Abilaha, Duke Elah, Duke Pinan, Duke Kenaz, Duke Teman, Duke Mibzar, Duke Magdiel, Duke Iram. These be the dukes of Edom, according to their habitations, in the land of their possessions. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. So I'm pretty sure that you can guess how I'm feeling after reading that, pronunciating those names. I am sure that I butchered them a few times, or all the times. Don't be upset, please. I can't pronounce English words. I'm really sorry about this one. It's one of those chapters. It's hard to get through. I have, if, if you could see my, my videos, I have so many cuts. So many cuts. The best cuts. But, cuts nonetheless. Anyway, let's get to chapter 37 and hope that there's more of a story there. Genesis chapter 37 And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with his sons of Bila, and with the sons of Selpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph 
more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamt a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamt. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my shelf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, our sheaves stood around about, and made scenes to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamt yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamt a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamt? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the saying, and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shesem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shesem. Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out to the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shazam. And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren, and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they scripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and mirah, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. And they passed by Midiads, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph unto Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent his clothes, 
And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kit of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So that was chapter 37. Um, very interesting. The dynamic between Joseph and his other brothers and what they did to him after him basically taunting them and taunting his father and kind of strange behavior. Like you can understand that the brothers don't like Joseph. But selling their brother off to, you know, to go to Egypt. That's kind of a, a yeah, it's not gray area. That's definitely not good. But that being said, it was definitely an interesting article. I'm looking forward to next week. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of these two chapters. Especially this last one. That first one was just really bad. Really bad. Uh, my pronunciation of words, that is. I'm not saying that the chapter itself was bad, just my rendition of it. Anyway, let me know what you think of it. And until next time. Take care and have a blessed Sunday.